You know, I've sold drugs. You know, my nephew has died from a fentanyl overdose. You know, my young nephew, 19 years old, died on his birthday. My sister died from a, you know, Percocet cocaine overdose, you know, and I was like, Dude, all I was doing my whole life was promoting drug use, violence, stupid stuff. I need pills and I need weed and I need drink. drink. Like I used to be 400 pounds. You know, I was super addicted to food, super overweight my whole life. Like I ate myself basically almost to death, you know, and I got to the point where I was like 19, 20 years old and I was going to the doctor and they're like, dude, if you keep eating the way you're gonna eat, you know, you're gonna die. Or whatever I liked that brought me happiness, you know, I just wanted to do it more and more to like an amount that was insane. You know, I would just keep doing it over and over again, you know, and I couldn't stop. My mom and dad, like, they drink here and there, but again, like, it it was all me. Hey, Brick Toast. I didn't do well in school, you know, like I saw like people's tests, you know, my classmates, I didn't feel like intelligent. So I kind of wanted to be different, you know, so I always wanted to do acting, you know, I wanted to do anything that made me stand out. You know, I always loved making music, you know, I started with playing piano, you know, and I thought it wasn't cool. You know, I was doing guitar, I didn't, I didn't really get into it enough, you know, and I grew up in Oakland, so like, I was listening to hip hop music and I really liked that, so then I started making it one day and then, I think for me, I thought like, all right, drugs and hip hop, you know, so I just started smoking weed. And for me, it was just weed in the beginning. I got Addies, I got Perks, and I got Bars. So I would just, you know, smoke weed with my friends and then we'd put on a beat and start freestyling. And then this is when I was like 16, all my friends were like, why don't you try to pursue it? So I was like, fuck it, you know, I looked up on my computer, like what studios I can go to. I found a studio to Too Short would record at, Mr. Fab, E-40, all the Bay Area rappers. So I made time and I, just, recorded a song and it had like a good jing to it and I made this super catchy chorus for Draymond Green and it was like about all the whole song was about Draymond Green and like the Warriors and the way I got like the way it blew up is that I posted it on the internet you know and it started getting a good amount of SoundCloud views and then his mom his Draymond Green mom tweeted about it and was like oh this kid made a song you know rap song about my son is from the Bay Area and then you know Draymond Green heard about it that was just the one song you know, like, it, that's how it all started. Just, I got lucky, I think. Before, before I got to the University of Arizona, like, I lived a super, like, sheltered life, you know? So, like, when I got to the University of Arizona, I knew a kid that I went to high school with, so I moved into his house, you know, I wasn't in the dorms, you know, so they were just, basically just smoking weed all day, taking dabs all day, and, like, that's what I started doing. I think I just took a Xanax one day and I was like, oh, I like this, you know? I was like, I like this way more. I did it for like, you know, a couple weeks straight or a couple months straight, I don't remember exactly, but I did it for a really long time and then I, like, I remember saying like, I tried to put them down, you know, and I went through gnarly ass withdrawals that I had no idea what would happen, you know? Like I, I was shaking, I couldn't sleep, like I had a weird pressure in my forehead, like I felt like I was gonna die, like I didn't know what the fuck was happening with me. You know, I was like, whoa, this is weird. Like, what is going on? You know, and someone told me, they're like, dude, like, you're going through withdrawals. And I'm like, withdrawals? What is that? Like, how do I help it? They're like, you need some Xanax. And I was like, what? Oh, okay. And then boom, you know, and then I just started taking Xanax all the time. I had like a little bit of clout for my music. You know, it hadn't blown up that much yet, but I had like 50, 60,000 followers. You know, again, like I was super overweight. I was unhealthy. I didn't really get no girls and like, but I was like, kind of famous they're like oh this kid is kind of popping like he goes to our school he has instagram followers so like i started being able to go to parties and then that's when i really started to like be that persona I got bars. and your nigga hitting me up acting hard he ain't hard all i need a little seal of some of my heart once i left the u of a i was just my main thing was like all right cool so like i do this i'm able to make music so what comes with music? Well, drugs, I need to be faded in the studio. So that was the mindset that I was in. People like look to music and like famous people, musicians. It's like, oh, I want to be like that person. You know, I look up to that person. And it's like, you see that person and they're rapping about taking 20, 30 Percocets, you know, and then you hear them in their own interviews and they're like, dude, I don't, I don't do drugs like that. You know, I just rap about it, you know? And for me, 
I wanted to do it, you know, I wanted to be what I rapped about, you know, so I did use drugs. Again, I was just trying to like be someone that I wasn't, you know, I was just trying to fit the scene, fit the persona. At the end of the day, like, I wanted to do music because that's what I love to do, you know, that's what I was good at, that's what I was talented at, that's where I felt safe. You know? Shit with the mob and the land and the gang, with my homies sip this worker propane. I got a little bit of like a little buzz, you know, and a tiny bit of fame, some Instagram followers. I'm like, right away, I just, I wanted to like show everybody on my social media that I was doing what all the other rappers were doing, you know. So then I just started, you know, popping perks, taking Xanax, sipping lean a lot, you know, and just to show people like, oh, I don't drink no alcohol. I look at my cup of lean, it's like $300, you know, look at me, I'm cool. I thought people didn't like me because I was fat, you know, girls didn't like me. So then when I started making music, it's like, oh, he's kind of a somebody. That's what I was showing, right? Like, oh, look at my cup of lean, look at this. Like, but they didn't see that I was just doing it by myself. When it got to that level of addiction where I couldn't stop, like my life was fucking depressing. Like I did nothing. Like I was just by myself using drugs all the time. And like, if I was with people, I'd be asleep. I wouldn't be interacting with them in a good way. I think I gave myself depression and anxiety. Like I wasn't happy with myself, but I tried to still portray on social media and like to people around me, like, oh, look at me. Look, I have all these nice things. I'm with the, like, like I must be happy, you know? And it's like, it was a way for me to kind of lie to myself about my current situation. And then it got to the point where drugs were more important to me than music was. Like, I was just getting involved with fucking gang members, you know, people, hella scary people, you know, that would kill me over $10, you know? And I was stealing from these people, manipulating these people. <laughs> The first time that brought me to treatment was, you know, my label, they sent me here because I got in some trouble, you know, they sent me here to get it fixed. You know, they're like, look, like if you go get right, if you go get treatment, you know, we'll, we'll still support you. You know, we'll still put out your music, we'll put out your album, just go get yourself right first. And I was clean for a little bit, you know, but then again, I got back into the scene. I started smoking weed again. I started letting stuff get to my head. I started drinking here and there, and I was just back full blown into the same things that I was doing. I was gonna release my album one day. You know, I had a flight booked to LA. I was visiting my parents in Oakland and I got all fucked up that night, you know, and I missed the flight, you know, and they called me the next day and they're like, dude, you messed up again. Like you're dropped, we're done with you. I basically lost my dream. You know, I didn't have my label no more. They didn't want to mess with me. No one wanted to make music with me. So I was just like, you know, fuck, if I don't have that, I might as well get myself, you know? So then I made the choice, the active choice to make myself come into treatment this time. Last time it wasn't my choice. Then I begged my parents, I was like, please, like, just send me, I had no money, I had no nothing, you know, I had, I didn't have myself, I was like, guys, like, if I keep going the way I'm going, like, I'm gonna die, you know, and it's like, I've overdosed twice, you know, when I got here, I was so fucked up that I fucking overdosed here, coming to treatment, I knew I was coming to treatment, like, I wanted to come here this time, and what did I do, I sewed a bunch of Xanax bars into a mask, you know, I had Perk 30s in my wallet, and I was sipping lean on the way up here. You know, and I was nodding out in the car. I spilled all the lean on myself. So I got all pissed off. So I opened up the mask and I took like 12, 13 Xanax bars. I ate my lot. Like I was talking to my roommate about it. He's like, yo, like when was the last time you used drugs? And I told him, bro, like two minutes ago. Like I fucking ate a pill right in front of them when I did my intake here. Like I knew I had one perk left in my wallet. So like I lied to the lady who worked here. I was like, yo, I need my wallet. I grabbed my wallet. I popped the last perk at the stairs, you know? And like I was fucking overdosing here, you know? And like. I got driven to the hospital, got hit with Narcan, and like, it, dude, it's like, what was I even thinking? Like, again, I wasn't trying to end my life, not at all, but it's like, I put myself here, and my thought was still to sneak drugs in. Why? Dude, in detox, like, I don't think I work in detox, right? I don't think I've seen anybody as medicated as I was in detox. You know, I was getting Klonopin five times a day. I was getting subs three times a day. Like I was in shit shape. 
fuck, dude. Like, I think I got down and my phase one counselor here, but I talked to him right when I got down. I was like, yo, like, you know, I, I'm thinking of the training program. You know, I'm thinking of maybe staying here and training. And he was like, dude, and this was right when I got down from detox. Cause I was like, bro, I fucked everything up in my life, dude. I have no music career. I have no education. I'm not gonna go out and go to school and try to get a job because I know that's not me. So then when I went down there, I talked to him and he was like, bro, like, I think that you would be great here. You know, you influence people super heavily, people like you. You know, you can talk to them, you can relate to them on another way, you know? And it's like me, I've never had a job in my life, you know? So I chose to be in recovery, work in recovery, again, to make it my living amends. You know, I wanted to make a living amends for all the shit negativity that I've been through, you know? Because again, this program, I mean, I know a lot of other programs probably focus on this, but it's like the present moment. You know, don't worry about the past. Don't focus on the future, just worry about right now. You know, and it's like, I want to paint a new path. You know, I want to help people get into recovery, get out of addiction. You know, I want to help that, you know, because people also look at recovery and addiction as we're weak, you know, we're fucking drug addicts, we're low lifes, we're bums on the street. And it's like, that's not what it is. You know, like I think everybody here, everyone that I've talked to come across with, you know, everyone's genuine ass people cool people that I can actually relate to. You know, everybody out there that I thought liked me, liked me for what I had, not who I was. Everybody here likes me for who I am, yeah. you know? And it's like, I can actually be myself here, you know? And I can do something that I really think is gonna help the world. Ultimately, I'm working here to help myself, you know? And through helping myself, I'm helping others at the same time, you know? So that's, that's just the way I see it now. You know, I just wanna live life, you know? I wanna, you know, life is beautiful, you know? As dumb as it sounds, right? You think I'm corny, I'm bullshit, and I'm not. You know, like life is beautiful. You know, I enjoy every day, even though maybe on my days off, I just sit in my bed and watch Netflix. You know, at least I'm happy. You know, I'm genuinely happy here. You know, out there, I wasn't happy. I made myself believe that I was happy through material things and drug use and like girls and partying, you know, and none of that shit was cool, you know? And it's like, I'm genuinely happy here every day. You know, I'm happy with myself every day because I know that I'm doing something good. You know, I don't have to lie to myself no more.